Okay, so we're continuing our discussion of Hamilton circuits, and we're expanding it to this topic of weighted graphs. And a weighted graph is simply a graph that has numbers attached to the edges, so that each edge has a cost associated with it. Now, when edges have cost, that cost per edge could be distance, could be time, and it could be money for travel expenses. So these are just three of the costs that can be put on an edge. And we can just put in arbitrary numbers just to practice uh, weighted graphs and finding efficient routes. So we're revisiting a problem that we saw earlier on a practice worksheet. It says, meet Willie Lohman, a traveling salesman. Willie has customers in five cities, which for the sake of brevity, we will call A, B, C, D, and E. He is planning a sales trip to each city. Willie needs to start and end the trip at his hometown of town A. Other than that, there are no particular restrictions as to the order in which he should visit the other four cities. And our goal is to find the least expensive trip for Willie. So I ask here, what are some strategies that you might employ to find the cheapest route? So pause the video here. Think about how you would describe to someone to find the cheapest route. Write that down and then unpause and we'll continue. So one of the techniques is if we're at city A, we can find what is the cheapest ticket attached to A. And we say out of these four, the cheapest would be 119. So we would visit city C first. This will be one of our strategies we look at today. It's known as the nearest neighbor algorithm. And that's where you choose the cheapest travel expense from the city you're currently at. So we were at A and the cheapest was to go to C. And then once you're at C, you say, well, which is the cheapest connected to C? And we see 120 is. So we would go to E next and so on and so forth. And we'll solve this by nearest neighbor in the following slide. Another technique we're going to look at today is called the brute force algorithm. And it's called brute force because it requires the most work out of all of the algorithms. And basically what that means is you're going to find every possible scenario that you can travel. And the cost associated. And choose the cheapest. So those are going to be our two strategies for today. So let's get started. So the brute force says make a list of all possible Hamilton circuits for the graph. Now, for our class, I will limit this to strictly graphs with four vertices because we saw that the number of Hamilton circuits is a factorial and it becomes um, too much work once we get more than four vertices. So four vertices has three factorial Hamilton circuits. And three factorial is equal to six. And we're actually only going to need to find half of those six. So that'll give us three that we'll have to calculate because three of them are just the reversed order direction of the original three. So that'll give us three that we have to find. If we had five vertices, then there would be four factorial Hamilton circuits. And four factorial is equal to 24, and half of 24 would be 12 um, Hamilton circuits that we'd have to evaluate and find the cost of. And we see that that's a big jump going from three to 12. And then if you had six um, vertices, five factorial would be 120, half of 120 is 60 that we'd have to calculate. So you can see why I'm going to limit it to just four vertices, and you'll have to find the three unique roots and their costs to demonstrate the brute force algorithm. So here is a vertex, uh, I'm sorry, a graph with four vertices, and we want to write the 
we know there's going to be six Hamilton circuits, but we want to find the three unique ones, not the reverse order ones. And we can start with A, B, C, D, A. And we should draw the graph that goes with it. A to B to C to D back to A. And we draw the graph so we can find that the next one we choose is unique. So after that, we would say next is A, B, uh, D, C, A. And we'll draw the graph that goes with it. A goes to B, but instead of to C, it'll go to D, then to C, and then back to A. So we could see that the second graph is different from the first graph. So we did A, B, C, D, A, then we did A, B, D, C, A. Let's change the second letter. Let's go A, C, and then B, D, A. And when we draw this, we go from A to C, but then up to B, down to D, and back to A. And we can see that this one has the X with the sides on top and bottom. This has the X with the sides on left and right. So they are different. Any additional circuit that you make is going to be a repeat of these values, only with a different direction. So just to demonstrate, uh, the next one would be uh, ACDBA. And if I did ACDBA, ACDBA from A to C, then to D, then to B, and back to A, we see that this is the same edge collection as ABDCA. And all it does is reverse the order that you travel them in. The cost is going to be the same. So we're saying that we don't need to account for this graph. Um, and we're done because we have the, th the three unique sets of edges that will give us all that we need to analyze. So now let's attach the values to the edges. So here we see we have 2, 5, 11, and 4. If we add that up, 4, 11, it's 15, 22. Here we have 2, 7, 6, and 11. So that's 17, 24, 26. And here we have 4, 5, 6, and 7. So that's 4 and 7 is 11, 17, 22. So we see that either of these are the most efficient route. We can choose either of them to visit all the cities and come back. That was using the brute force algorithm. So the next is the nearest neighbor algorithm. Uh, we have to have a starting point, usually our home city. And then from the starting point, we choose the nearest neighbor. Now, the nearest neighbor doesn't mean the closest point on the graph looking at the image. It means the one with the smallest value on the edge. So if I had a drawing here, A, B, C, D, and back to A, I say that from A to B is 11, but from A to C is 2. Even though this edge looks smaller, it has a more expensive cost to it, we would choose this as the nearest neighbor. We would say the nearest neighbor to A is C because it has the least expensive edge that attaches the two vertices. We will do that, keep choosing nearest neighbor, meaning once we leave from A to C, we would say, what is the nearest neighbor to C? We would choose the next nearest neighbor and so on and so forth until we get back to our home city. So... Here's another graph to look at. Uh, just some review. Is this graph shown a complete graph? And we first want to count the vertices. One, two, three, four, five vertices. So remember that the definition of a complete graph is a graph where every vertex is connected to all the other vertices exactly one time. Now, for and to be connected to the other four vertices, it needs four edges. One, two, three, four. It has four edges. Great. Well, all of the vertices need to have a degree of four 
for that to happen. So let's look at V. One, two, three, four. Good. R. One, two, three, four. S. One, two, three, four. And H. One, two, three, four. So as long as every vertex has a degree that is equal to one less than the number of vertices, then it is a complete graph. So the degree of each vertex is four, which is one less than the number of vertices. Therefore, it is a complete graph. How many unique Hamilton circuits exist? Well, five minus one factorial, because there are five vertices. I'll call this K5 up here, because it's a complete graph with five vertices. That means we have four factorial unique Hamilton circuits, which means 24 Hamilton circuits, which means we would have to calculate half of those and find 12 different values um, to see what was the cheapest if we were to do the brute force algorithm. However, we are going to find a root generated by the nearest neighbor algorithm. I forgot to say where to start. Let's say start from vertex n. So we'll treat that as the home. So vertex n, what is the cheapest edge connecting vertex n? And we see we have an edge that is 25, 8, 2, and 14. So the h with a weight of 2 between n to h is the nearest neighbor. So we start making our list n, comma, h. From h, what is the smallest edge or the least expensive edge connected to it? Not including n, because we've already been there. We want to save n for last to go home to. So we look and say from h, we have 9, 16, and 3. So we will go to s, because that is 3. And now that we are at s, we have uh, v and r left that have not been visited, because I don't want to go to h. I don't want to go back to n. So between 10 and 11, r is the cheapest. Once we are at R, we say we don't want to go back to S, H, or N. I have to go to V. And since that's all of my cities, now I have to return back to N. So that is my nearest neighbor root. And the nice thing about nearest neighbors, there's only one answer you can get. It may not be the most efficient, but it will not be the most expensive either. It is just considered a good root. Now we can find the cost of this root. So we're going to go from N to H to S to R to V back to N. And we want to tally each of the weights along the way. So we have from N to H is 2. From H to S is 3. From S to R is 10. From R to V is 13. And from V back to N is 8. And when we add these up, we have... And that is how we solve a uh, nearest neighbor problem with Hamilton circuits and graphs. So now if we go back to the Willie Lohman problem, um, it says list the order of the vertices traveled and the cost associated with this route, and we want to use the nearest neighbor algorithm and Willie's home city is A, so we want to start and end at A. So we look at this and we say the cheapest edge connected to A is from A to C. So we'll say A, C, and I'll write down $119. Once I get to C, I have three edges I need to consider. The $120 edge to E is the nearest neighbor.
Once we were at E, we do not want to go back to A because that has to be last. We have B and D, so that's 200 and 199. So 199 is the nearest neighbor at vertex D. Now we have to go to B, which is 150. And then we must return back to A, which is 185. And uh, $773 is the cost of this route using the nearest neighbor algorithm. Now, again, this may or may not be the cheapest, but it definitely is not the most expensive. And the book likes to use the word optimal. Optimal is their way of saying the most efficient way to plan the route. May or may not be optimal, but it's definitely not the most expensive. So that is the end of our lecture. Uh, again, watch the video, answer your questions on the homework, and send me questions in email. All right.